The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi everyone and welcome to Dentrix Ascend Friday Forums where we'll be covering a range of topics from the most commonly asked support questions to new features and handy tips and tricks to help you along your journey with Ascend. These webinars will be running every Friday at 12.30pm Australian Eastern Standard Time so come along and bring your lunch. In today's Friday Forum, we'll be covering four of the most common problems around manual e-claims and how to solve them, as well as covering mandatory payment tags on credit card payments. Please feel free to send through any questions you may have throughout the webinar, and I'll be sure to answer them at the end. So the first issue I want to cover is what to do when a private payment, such as FPOS, was completed instead of an e-claim payment. So I have one of my patients up here, Mary Lou. In this particular case, Mary came into the practice, however, the high caps machine was down. As a result, the claim was completed for the patient manually, directly from the terminal. Because the claim was completed manually, we then had to enter a payment manually into a send. And as you can see here, it's been entered as an FPOS payment um, on this patient's ledger. Um, and there's just been the $20 discount, the gap payment there as well. Before we begin rectifying this, I first want to draw your attention to a few different areas. The first of which is the patient overview screen. So we'll just jump over to the home screen here. And if we go into this unattached procedures area here, we can actually see that Mary Lou is sitting in this area here prompting us to create a claim. If we then jump back to the ledger and then go back to the patient walkout and then jump into this create claims tab here, we can also see that there's a couple of item codes sitting here prompting us to create the claim here. The reason that this is occurring is because the patient has a health fund linked to their account. So we can see this by taking a look in the top left-hand corner of the screen and the shield is green, indicating that this patient has third-party coverage. One other thing that is useful to be aware of is on the procedure code line itself, if we click onto one of these item codes, you can see that this bill to third party switch is on. Uh, if a patient has a health fund linked to their account, procedure codes by default will always have this switch to on. Now that we have those few areas out of the way, how do we go about fixing this? So in our case, this is an FPOS payment, so we'll need to go ahead and refund this. So I'll click onto the FPOS payment line and choose refund. And now that we've done that, we can just save that refund to complete that. We can see that that's now been refunded and the amount has been cancelled out from the original FPOS line, which is perfect. We'll now um, go ahead and jump straight back into the patient walkout area because now we can begin entering in a manual claim payment. But the very first thing that we do need to do is make sure we go ahead and create the claim. So back into the patient walkout area, we can then go into the create claims tab and down the bottom here, go ahead and create claim. Now that we've done that, we can actually close out of the patient walkout. So we'll close there. And you can see here that it's now got the unsent claim sitting here in purple. At this point, we can enter in the manual e-claim payment by going to the payment area in the top left-hand corner up here. So we'll just go ahead and open that up. And we just need to enter in the amount initially that was covered. So in our case, it was $100. And when you get to the type here, this is where you want to make sure you select e-claim payment electronic. So I'll select that there. Now, of course, we didn't actually complete the claim electronically. We did it manually on the terminal. So what we're going to do is just tick this little manual box here just to advise that. Now, because we did do a refund, we do have some money here that needs to be applied. So we're just going to apply that here. Every time you do enter in a manual payment, you will just need to make sure you do allocate the correct amount per item code as well. So in this case, let's go ahead and say $50 each, for example. And if we go ahead and get that one saved, perfect. 
Final step here as well is because we've completed a refund, we will just need to make sure that we apply any unapplied credits. If you take a look up here in the left hand corner, you can see that they're sitting there in the power blue. All we need to do is click onto that line there and go ahead and choose apply credits. Fantastic. So now that's all zero dollars in the unapplied credits there. We can see that there's the light purple and the dark purple e-claim payment lines, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now, if we finally just jump back over to the home screen here as well, I do just want to draw to your attention as well that she's actually no longer sitting under the unattached procedures here also, which is perfect. So in this second issue, I'll be discussing how to adjust a date on an e-claim. I just want to begin by advising that this process does involve backdating, which A, requires the appropriate permissions and B, could have potential implica implications on clinicians' payments. However, sometimes you simply made a genuine mistake and we do have people call up about how to fix it. I'll bring up my example patient here, Sarah. Now, this particular patient actually visited the practice last week. Um, I am just going to change the date on this particular item code to reflect that. So I can show you what can sometimes happen in certain situations. Let me just change my view to make sure that we can actually see all of the item codes completed as well, which is perfect. So this particular situation here, we can see that this patient has had two item codes completed and you can actually see that the date on these is the 7th of June. So let's take, for example, that this particular patient actually visited the practice last week. However, the high caps terminal was down at the practice. Similar to my previous example, their claim was completed manually on the terminal, but the practice still needs to reflect this within a send. Ultimately, we need to enter in a manual e-claim payment. However, if we bring our eyes up to the health fund shield in the top left hand corner, we can actually see that this is grey, which means that there's currently not a health fund linked. So the very first thing that we'll want to do is go ahead and link that. So if we click onto that shield here, in this area, we can just click this blue add third party button so we can add in a third party. Now this particular patient is with Medibank Private, so we're just going to go ahead and add that Medibank Private here. The other thing that we do want to do is just make sure that this high caps patient ID is set as well. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and save as normal. Perfect. So the next thing that you would typically do in this situation is simply go back to the patient's ledger. And now that they have a health fund linked and we need to enter in a manual payment, you would jump to the patient walkout area. So we'll jump to the patient walkout and we'll go ahead and create the invoice as is always the first step. And then we'll go ahead and go to the create claims area. However, you'll notice that there's actually nothing sitting in this create claim area for us to complete. This is a little bit of an issue, of course, um, because the patient does actually have a third party linked here. So you might be asking yourself, well, why can't we create the claim? And it is quite important that we create the claim because you're not able to enter in any manual payments without a claim having been created. So with that in mind, I want to um, draw your attention to a field that is often overlooked. So going back to this patient's third party, to do that, I'm just going to click onto the health fund shield here. You'll notice um, if we click into the health fund Medibank private, and if you take a look over at the coverage start date, this is set to the 14th of June. Now, this is particularly troublesome considering if we go back to the ledger temporarily, we can see that the item codes are actually entered in on the 7th of June. So what we actually need to do in this situation, jumping back over to Medibank Private, is we need to make sure that this coverage start date is actually backdated to make sure it actually covers the procedure codes. So in our case, I'm going to set that to be the 7th of June. And now that we've done that, I'm just gonna go ahead and save. Perfect. And we'll just go ahead and ledger. Now, just when it does come to that coverage start date, by default, it's always just going to set to the date that you add it into the patient's account. So today is the 14th of June. That's why it was defaulted to the 14th of June. Um, that's how it's always going to default to. Now that we've done that, 
we can go to the patient walkout window again. And we have already created the invoice, but now we can actually go ahead and create the claim. And unlike before, we can actually see that the item codes are sitting here waiting for us to create. So we'll go ahead and create the claim. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and close out of there. Now that we've done that, this part's very similar to the prior part. We can actually go ahead and pop in the payment, the manual payment as per normal. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now, this particular situation, the payment was physically received on the 7th of June. We're just fixing it up today. Because of that, we I am going to go ahead and backdate this to the 7th of June. So it accurately reflects the fact that we physically received the money on the 7th of June. So I'm going to go ahead and change that there. And then just going to go ahead and enter the amount that was covered by um, their high cap. So in our case, I'm just going to say that this was $100. And again, we're going to set the type to be e-claim payment electronic. And again, we always do need to go ahead and apply per item code. So $100, I'm going to make it a nice easy spread, $50, $50. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and save that. Now that we've done that, you would, of course, go ahead and just complete the remaining gap payment. In our case, it was $65. And let's say, for example, the patient paid this by cash on the day. So I'm just going to jump into the payment area. Again, because this is done a week ago on the 7th of June, I am going to change the date at this point to the 7th here. And I'm just going to enter the amount that was paid, which was $65 and enter in as cash. Perfect. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save that. Perfect. And as we can see, that's looking good. We can see that the light purple and the dark purple e-claim payment lines are sitting there as we need. So we'll move on to our third issue now, which is when you're unable to create a claim due to the health fund being linked after treatment. So my patient in this example is Mitch Willow. I'm just going to go ahead and quickly bring him up now. Perfect. And I'm just going to edit the view for the sake of demonstrating this. Wonderful. So in this particular example, taking a quick look, you can see that there's just the one item code sitting there. So what has happened in this case is this patient, Mitch, he was running a little bit late to um, his appointment and he forgot to mention that he had a health fund card. So he came into the practice and went into the surgery room. He had his treatment. And then once that was finished, the doctor sent him out to the front desk to complete the payment. Pretty standard. So he's now at the front desk and he lets the receptionist know that he has a health fund card and is with Bupa. You have probably noticed that the health fund shield is grey, which means we'll begin by linking this patient up to their health fund. So just jumping into here. That's OK. I'm just going to go ahead and choose add third party as we did in the previous situation. And he mentioned that he had Bupa. So we're just going to go ahead and link Bupa here. As always, I'm just going to make sure that high caps patient ID is set as well. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and save. Perfect. Now that we've done that, I'm just going to head back over to the patient's ledger here. Now, after you've done that, of course, the next step is typically to jump into the patient walkout. I'm just going to jump over to there now. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and create the invoice to begin. But you'll see that when we then go over to create the claim, again, sort of similar to the previous scenario, there's nothing actually sitting there for us to create. Now, again, we have linked the health fund to his account. So that can't be the reason as to why we're not able to create the claim. But there is another thing that we need to double check. So I'm just going to close it out of the patient walkout area again. Now, if we go onto the item code here, and take a quick look, we can actually see that this bill to third party is switched off. 
Now, this is the reason why we're not able to create a claim. Essentially, what has happened is the patient has had their treatment entered by the dentist in the surgery room when they didn't have a health fund linked to their account. So what Ascend does in that situation, they, it goes, OK, so there's no health fund. So that means there's not going to be any third party payment that goes through. So let's make sure this bill to third party switches off. Now, in this particular situation, he does actually have a health fund and we have changed that now. So what we need to go ahead and do is actually change this bill to third party switch to be on. However, you've probably noticed here that everything is grayed out and not able to be edited. Um, so we actually need to take an extra step first. So I'll begin by cancelling out of there. And what we want to do is we actually want to click onto this invoice line here. And I'm just going to go ahead and cancel the invoice. So I'll cancel that and then cancel invoice. Perfect. Now that we've canceled the invoice, I'm just going to go back onto the item code here. And you can see that this can now be edited. So once the invoice has been canceled, what it does is essentially unlock those item codes. So if you need to edit the provider because it was put through incorrectly or change this bill to third party, you can do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch this to on. And now that I've done that, I'm just gonna go ahead and save. Now that that's looking much better, we can jump straight back into the patient walkout and we'll go ahead and recreate the invoice. Very important step to do that when you do cancel the invoice, make sure you do recreate it. So we'll create that invoice now. And then if we go over to the Create Claims tab, we can see the item code sitting there waiting for us to create. So we'll go ahead and create the claim. Fantastic. Now, of course, now that we've done that, the next step would be you jump over to the send claims tab and you can go send selected claims. I unfortunately don't have a high caps terminal here, so it won't go anywhere for me. But of course, in the practice, that's where it'll send it through to the high caps terminal and you'll be able to swipe the patient's card and complete the payment as per normal. So that was the third issue covered. For my fourth issue here, I'll be going through what to do when a patient has forgotten their health fund card. So I've just brought up another patient here, Paul Hart. Um, now, what we want to do is just check a couple of things very quickly. So the first thing we can see is that he does have a health fund linked up here. You can tell by the fact that the shield is Green. Now, the next thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to enter in a couple of item codes just for the sakes of just demonstrating what can sometimes happen. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in perhaps a 114 and apply that. And let's say, for example, maybe a, a 121 as well. Fantastic. So typically in this situation, the patient doesn't have a health fund card, uh, sorry, does have a health fund card, but he's forgotten to bring it into the practice today. Um, typically what you do in this situation is pretty much process it as normal. You have the item code sitting here. All you would then go ahead and do is jump to the patient walkout window, and then you'd go ahead and first create the invoice, and then you'd perhaps jump over to the payment window because perhaps he's decided to pay the full account by FPOS. That's pretty standard and not a problem at all. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and just enter in an FPOS payment here, FPOS, for the full amount of $160. So I'll go ahead and get that one saved. And then if we close out of this account, we can see what his account's looking like at the moment. It looks perfect to me. You can see that there's no outstanding balance here in the top right hand corner. Um, and it's completely paid by the FPOS payment. So even though he's forgotten his health fund card, that's okay. However, the dilemma that a lot of practices will typically have in this situation is if you go over to the home screen here and then jump into this unattached procedures area, you can see that he's actually sitting here with the procedures waiting for a create, uh, claim to be created. Now, this can be a little bit confusing because as we just saw on his ledger, everything's actually been paid in full. His balance is zero dollars and he doesn't owe anything, but it's sitting here waiting for us to create the claim. So what we actually need to do in this situation is backtrack a little bit. So if we go back into the ledger here, the reason why, and you may have guessed this already from the previous examples, but the reason why it's prompting for the claim to be created is because 
on each of these item codes, this bill to third party switch is actually switched to on. Now, this is switched to on, of course, because he has a health fund linked. And we don't want to change that. We don't want to remove the health fund from his account or anything like that, because he does have one. He's just forgotten it today. But what we do need to do is go ahead and change this bill to third party to be off. So I'm just going to cancel out of that item code. And the very first step in doing that again is to cancel the invoice. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel the invoice and cancel. Wonderful. Now that we've done that, the item codes are now unlocked, which means that we can go ahead and turn this bill to third party switch off. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch that off and save. And we just need to make sure that we do that for all the item codes for the day. So just doing that for both of them. Save. Fantastic. Now we have cancelled the invoice. So it is very important that we go ahead and jump into the patient walkout and recreate that invoice. So I'm doing that now. Create that invoice, fantastic. And then if we go ahead and close out of the patient walkout window, the next thing that we notice is that the FPOS payment is actually separated by this gray statement line. And that is because we had canceled the invoice. You'll also notice that if we take a look up here under the unapplied credits, there are some unapplied credits sitting there as well. So all you need to do is just click onto that little hyperlink there and go ahead and apply those credits. And that just applies that FPOS payment back to those item codes. And as you can see now, that's no longer separated by that statement line. Perfect. Now, the final thing I just want to show you in this particular situation as well is if we go back over to the home screen, you can see that he's actually no longer sitting there in the unattached procedures either. So those are four of the common e-claim issues that practices encounter. Now, I just want to cover the mandatory payment tags for credit card payments as well. Now, as a practice manager, you might have a need to report on the different payment types, whether it be credit card, bank transfer, direct debit, etc. However, as far as reports go, they are only as accurate as the tagging that is done on each transaction. This meant that when you go to a payment analysis report, often you wouldn't see too much data um, or you had no idea how accurate it was based on the optional tags. So that's the payment analysis report here. Now, the mandatory tags are the answer to this problem as they allow admins to set tags specifically for a given payment type and they ensure that reception staff are selecting tags accurately. Ascend now has some of these preset, for example, in the case of credit card payments. Um, now, this is a change to the workflow for reception. So understandably, it takes getting used to. However, the reporting at a high level will be much more accurate. If you are an admin and you have no interest in this kind of tagging or reporting, you can turn it off, however. So I'll walk you through how to do that. Now, the very first step you want to do is jump into the settings area up here, and then you just want to head down to ledger options. Perfect. Once you're in ledger options, you would just want to go over to this credit card payment area and you just want to click the little pen icon next to it. And once you're within here, this is where your tagging settings will be. So typically by default, this tag restriction rules is set to on for the practice. And here is where you're able to add tags or remove tags as needed. So if you wanted to add, for example, American Express to that, you can just start typing it and it will come up. Or alternatively, if you wanted to delete those out, you can and just customize it to what it is that your practice needs. Alternatively, if you do need to turn it off altogether, to do so, all you need to do is hit this tag restriction rules and turn that off, and then you can go ahead and save it. Perfect, so now I'll go through and answer some of your questions.
So I do have a question here, um, just asking about where the unapplied credit has gone to. Um, I see that's from you, Joyce. I, I can add, actually take you off mute if, you, if you'd like to sort of maybe talk about that a little bit further or elaborate, but I'll try and explain as best as I can. Um, so the unapplied credit, essentially when you cancel out the invoice, the payment that's sitting there, what it does is it it's just loose money essentially. So when uh, there's unapplied credit sitting in the top left-hand screen of Ascend, um, it's essentially saying that that payment, it doesn't know which item codes it's associated with. So when you click apply on the unapplied credits, what it does is it's automatically going to assign it to the, the most recent item codes that don't have payments associated essentially. Typically that is correct and what needs to be done. In some situations, for example, if you have had a deposit completed by a patient or something like that, um, you might want to specifically apply credits, not just have it automatically fill it top down as far as that goes. Um, that's sort of a little bit of a different situation, but when it comes to cancelling item codes or cancelling invoices and that side of things, um, just hitting apply credits essentially is just going to reapply the payment that was already there. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, but with that being said, are there any other questions that anyone might like me to answer? I do have Stuart here with me as well, if you have any questions for him. <laughs> um, also, this is going to be running every week. So if um, there's any topics specifically that you guys would like us to cover, very happy to hear your thoughts on that as well. Thanks for your question there, Gina. Um, she asked, sometimes patients have two insurances such as Smile and Bupa. Do we have to enter the finish date for insurance coverage? Uh, which is a fantastic question, thanks for asking. Uh, the answer is yes at the present time. You do need to unfortunately um, finish the coverage for one and then start the coverage for the other, essentially when you're swapping between the two. With that in mind, it is something that is a feature request um, and definitely something that the product managers and the development team are discussing about hopefully changing in the future. So, um, but at the moment, yes, that's exactly the process you do need to take. Thanks for your question again, Joyce. Uh, great one again. So uh, she's just asked, when we cancel invoices to make amendments and that happens across two months, so say a patient came in in May, but we didn't change the invoice until June, which month will the intake be accounted for? Which is a great question. Um, and also a little bit tricky to answer, being that it sort of depends which reports you're running to find the information. So there's it all comes down to 
the transaction date or the applied date. So when you're backdating a payment, what you're doing is you're changing the applied date and the transaction date is the date that's actually entered or is the date when you physically enter into a send. So for example, it's the 14th of June. Um, if you entered in something today, the transaction date would be the 14th of June and that won't change. But if we were to backdate it to May, the applied date would then be May. So to answer your question, if you had a patient um, where you edited the account, not the, in June, but they came in in May. If you are running a report that takes into account the applied date, they would appear in the applied in the May takings. If you took into account transaction date, then it would take into account in June's takings. Is essentially how that works, and it does get a little bit complicated. Um, transaction date can never change. So when it comes to things like doctors' payments and and things like that, generally using transaction date is a good way to go. Um, and there are a fair few power reports that we can run to get that sort of information. Um, if you're interested as well, we can definitely cover a little bit more about that side of things in future webinars. But hopefully that answers your question a little bit. All right, everyone. Well, that just about wraps up today's Friday forum. Um, before I go, I just want to remind you that if you have any other questions or want to revisit these examples, they are all accessible in the Ascend Resource Centre. Um, you can access that directly from the help button within Ascend um, in the top right corner. Just go down to Resource Centre and you'll be able to jump in and take a look at it all. Um, Hope you all have a fantastic weekend and don't forget to tune in next week where we'll be learning all about online booking in Ascent. Thank you.